I'm going to get some enough. So both of them looking for a win, definitely uh, wanting to avoid a loss at this uh, stage of the of the tournament, and you're absolutely right, 5-1-1 one, one for both. Stefan is the first player here, and he plays a nest ball, which is very important when you're playing a deck like Zoroark. You want to get as many Zoro into play as possible. You want to get as many of your supporting Pokemon into play as possible. That will allow you to continue to set up. This uh, this nest ball will, uh, will, will give him some options, so he's looking through his deck. He's making sure that nothing too critical is surprised. And, uh, and at this point, uh, Stefan is just looking to really start cementing his... Uh, uh, his consistency, and we actually see another nest ball in his hand. So, or, yeah. yeah, another nest ball in his hand. So he's going to be able to play a couple of these uh, in the first turn of the game. That's about as good as you can hope for. Yeah, so right off the bat, so Stefan is playing a Zorark GX deck, which he used Zorark to uh, win the international championships last season. He got a second place this season in Oceania, also playing Zorark GX. So the man loves to trade, sure. uh, as many of our top players do. Uh, he is running a very similar list to the one we saw earlier in the day with Pedro Eugenio Torres using the Zorark kind of Persian and Naganadal GX build. But you can see right off the bat, it is a much different version of that deck. He does not play Professor Elm's Lecture, instead sticking with the Nest Ball and Lily engine to start off the game. And Stefan has talked a lot about how big of a proponent he is of Dugong. And he has stuck to his guns here uh, Dugong is that dual blizzard attack lets you do 60 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon and uh, he feels like that is a very strong card in the Pokemon TCG right now. We'll see if he gets to put it on display at all here. Uh, standing in the face of the Mew from Chris which kind of stops that strategy a bit. But uh, yeah, great start from Stefan so far and this is where Chris gets to see the bad news. I think typically here he would search for Murkrow and uh, try to get his I win card. Uh, if you have Honchkrow GX as your active Pokemon, it has the Ruler of the Night ability, which says as long as it's your active Pokemon, your opponent can't play special energy cards. Uh, and spoiler, Stefan only has special energy cards in his deck. So if Chris were able to get Honchkrow GX as active Pokemon, he pretty much wins the game but it's in his prize cards, so he's going to have to play a real game. <laughs> yeah, being forced to, like, Guzma every time you want to just attach, do something as simple as attaching energy is not where you want to be if you're Stefan. Uh, but Chris, of course, not out yet. It just means that, uh, that his path to victory is going to be quite a bit more difficult. Yeah, so... Now, Spirit Tomb, obviously, you want to get it into play as early as possible because it is kind of like a... Um, you know, it, it gets stronger as the, as the game progresses. Yeah, it's got to build some spite, you know? Got to put damage counters on itself to build up for that anguish cry attack. And look at this. Spirit has got to get angry, you know? Yeah, it's just knocking out that Zoro on the first turn of the game. He plays the rainbow energy to purposely damage Spirit Tomb, use the ability to put another damage counter, and now it's doing 10 plus 60, getting a turn one knockout on this Zoroa with this Spirit Tomb. We do have another Zoro in play, though, and that Zoro becomes a Zoroark. Uh, right away, at, at the very beginning of Stefan's second turn of the game, he finds himself uh, an Ultra Ball with his trade, uh, which, uh, coupled with a Pokemon communication and whatnot, it will mean that Stefan, despite getting a, uh, one of his Zoroas knocked out on the first turn, is still going to start setting up very, very consistently. And uh, that Pokemon communication does get played right away, finding Stefan any Pokemon in his deck at the low cost of just shuffling one back, in to the, back, in, back into the deck. And now... Stefan, uh, I mean, you said it yourself. He, he's a world-class player. He's won this exact event uh, just last year. He's going for a repeat. He's been in so many difficult spots before that just having your active Zoro knocked out on turn one is, you know, not a big deal. It, it, these things happen, and uh, it's how you it's how you deal with it and how you set yourself up for the you know for the mid game in, uh, in this kind of a situation where the matchup seems like it's going to drag on at least a few more turns in uh, than usual. Yeah. And, uh, and Stefan had a pretty good start, but not a perfect one. Uh, the important thing here is he's going to get that Alolan Muck into play. And this card just shuts down the Spirit Tomb strategy so hard. Uh, look at every Pokemon on Chris's board. It, they're all basic Pokemon that have abilities. Yep. Now they're all basic Pokemon <laughs> that do not have abilities, <laughs> thanks to that power of alchemy from Alolan Muck. Uh, he can no longer use Spirit Tomb's ability to add damage counters. Uh, he can't energy evolution with Eevee. Um, the bench barrier from Mew doesn't work anymore. Just this one Alolan Muck 
shuts down basically Chris's whole deck, and I think that's why you see the Honkrow GX in his list. He probably knows, eh, if I play against Zorak with Alolan Muck, probably not winning that game. But if I have Honkrow, they're probably not winning that game. So we'll see how long he actually decides to play this game out, if he can actually uh, pull off any knockouts here. This would be a good turn to have that Umbreon with Retaliate, as you see on the screen there, to hit for 120 damage. But otherwise, this is going to get depressing very quickly for him. All he has is a bunch of basic Pokemon and not a lot of ways to knock out a Zorark GX. Yeah, being forced to kind of just uh, use a supporter for anything other than a Guzma to knock out, that, to knock out the Alolan Mug in this kind of a spot is just... It's rough, and it's just a tough spot to be in if you're Chris. And you said it yourself, you know, if, you're, uh, if your key tech Pokemon for this exact matchup is prized, then you, you, you're you just not in a good spot. That's the card that puts you in a good spot to begin with. So now Chris is kind of forced to just promote this uh, this EV, pass the turn along, and just brace, brace for impact in a sense, and hope that his next turn can provide him with some sort of additional answers. But you're absolutely right. He currently has a field full of Pokemon that just seem a little pathetic if we're being honest here. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Uh, Stefan did have to use triple acceleration energy to get the riotous beating knockout on his last turn, which does have to be discarded at the end of the turn. So he still needs to find an energy card to follow up with an attack. But if he's ever able to find a double colorless energy, he'll probably just announce riotous beating for the next couple turns and end up winning the game that way. But he does need to find it. Right now, all he has is another triple acceleration energy, which he isn't going to play, but it's no double colorless. Right. Lily does draw him three, uh, three more cards. I mean, he has access to, to trades. He has access to anything. The double colorless will come, whether it comes this turn or not. <laughs> you know, not, not too big of a deal, but uh, it's, it seems almost impossible for that double colorless to not, uh, to not see the field, you know, potentially even uh, the following turn. So Stefan just kind of in cruise control at this point. Yep. Uh, has everything he needs... Uh, he got a little fortunate that Chris did not have what he needed, but it, it's just a, it's a spot where Stefan just does not want to misstep. Stefan doesn't want to uh, let his opponent get back into a game that seems to be out of reach here for, for Chris. Uh, historically, this is the kind of matchup that Zorark GX would destroy. Uh, it gets one-hit knockouts with Riotous beating, and Chris's deck can't really knock out Zorark GX in one attack, so you just slowly destroy these... Uh, single prize attacker decks that can't get enough damage for one hit knockouts when you just trade through your deck, draw a bunch of cards. If you take a hit, you play Acerola, pick up your Zorark back to your hand, deny your opponent a two prize knockout. And uh, every turn, you're going to be taking knockouts on their stuff and you're going to be denying them prizes. And thanks to trade, you're going to be full of resources in your hand every turn. It just, it, it's just how the matchups have played out historically, especially once you have Alolan Muck in the mix to disable all of their abilities. And yeah, Chris is just going to scoop this one up. Says, all right, well, I'm not winning this one. Hans Crow has betrayed me. Let's move on to game two. Yeah, and, and it's perfectly fine. You know, I mean, obviously, nobody wants to lose. But in, in a spot like that where your opponent just gets everything he needed and you didn't get what you needed, you just chalk it up to these things happen. And as long as it doesn't happen again in the next two games, we're going to be OK. Uh, now, the question is, will the Hans Crow GX be enough to, uh, will the Honchkrow GX be enough to secure the victory for, for Chris? I don't think it's, you know, a 100% victory rate, but it's pretty close. Yeah, it's pretty good. If you can get Honchkrow GX into play before your opponent plays a double colorless energy, it's almost always game over. Um, but uh, if your opponent can play a double colorless on the first turn, say turn one, Stefan gets down a Zoroa with a double colorless, uh, preventing your opponent from playing special energy doesn't get rid of the ones they already have. So, yeah, it, it's certainly not an auto win, but I mean, it's it's pretty close, especially because Chris, uh, he's a smart player. Uh, he, he understands that, hey, I can still lose if my opponent gets an energy on board. He's actually sure. playing an enhanced hammer as well, which was really common in the Giratina EX decks we saw uh, three or four years ago where you would have that chaos wheel attack, which did a similar thing, preventing your opponent from playing special energy cards. Uh, if you can remove the ones that are already in play and then you prevent them from playing future special energy, that's when you win the game.
Well, good news, Chris. You do not have any Elantro GX <laughs> prize this game. Yeah. And uh, we might see a different story this time around. Remember, Chris <laughs> doesn't get to go first here. St Stefan looks at Murkrow and goes, <laughs> uh-oh. <laughs> Wait, why wouldn't you find the last game? <laughs> hmm. All right, so a uh, pretty strong start here from Chris. Oh, man. An and he gets to let loose. Yeah. And let loose with Jirachi, on your, with Jirachi active. Uh, that's... That's what the doctor ordered if you want to win game two. This game might not last long. <laughs> um, I thought yeah. game one was short. <laughs> right. And also, Stefan started with his worst opener, the Giratina, uh, which is used for some cute distortion door plays. Sometimes you can <laughs> set up turns where you get knockouts with these distortion door ability. You can always just trade it away with Zorak GX, bring it back from your discard pile. There's no way to attack with it in this deck, as we saw with the Malamar deck in the previous round. It's just used for that ability, which can be used in some tricky spots. Now Jirachi finds the Poke Gear, and uh, that might be the end of Chris's turn. Yeah. <laughs> Stefan now reading the Hustle Belt from Chris. Uh, basically, if it's attached to Spirit Tomb, it reads Spirit Tomb does 60 more damage. All right, well, he does play the Poke Gear and before passing the turn, finds, I believe, Cynthia. Yep. He still does need to find Honchkrow GX, which is not a guarantee by any means. I actually don't know how many ways he plays to search for it, which could end up being a problem. There's just a couple Ultra Balls. Um, I think that's it. Just two Ultra Balls. So it's not even that likely he gets a turn to Honchkrow GX with his deck. Just two Ultra Balls? Unless you just draw it straight away, you know? Uh, sure. Like you play a Cynthia, for example. And then the first card you draw is Honchkrow GX. That works very well. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't really fault the guy. You know, he had a prize last time. This, He's this trained it well. Only <laughs> evens things out, in my opinion. Yep. All right, so now a nest ball here for Stefan as he now begins his first turn of the game. Remember, he did get let, lo uh, he did get let loose, and uh, that means that he started this turn off with only four cards, fifth card drawn for uh, at the start of his turn. Uh, that nest ball very... Uh, very nice, as it's going to allow him to uh, find a Pokemon to, to bench here. But he needs additional help here from his hand. Yeah, and, you know, Honchkrow GX is obviously very strong against this deck. But, again, there are ways around it. it the ability only works when Honchkrow GX is your active Pokemon. So uh, you can Guzma around it and then attach a double colorless energy to one of your Pokemon so that you can attack Honchkrow in a future turn. By the way, yeah. Stefan actually was eyeing down a judge, and he decided to play the Tapu Lele. Uh, almost said, anything you can do, I can do better. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, little did he, did he know that Chris actually uh, would have been, you know, very damaged by, by, that, uh, by that judge, thanks to that timely Honchkrow GX sitting in his hand. But yeah. instead, of course, Lily is the more optimal play if you don't have caster vision. <laughs> uh, and I think Stefan knows it is imperative to find a double colorless energy to play on this turn. He might even go as far as, like, searching up a Dedenne GX so he can Dedenne change and dig through his deck and find a double colorless energy, something he can play this turn before that Honchkrow GX comes out. Yeah, I think I saw an Ultra Ball at the, uh, in the back of his hand, but actually it's a Pokemon communication, so even better. Uh, that Pokemon communication will likely, like you said, find himself a Dedenne, uh, Dedenne here to Dedenne change and uh, just find the energy that he needs. He, uh, he unfortunately for him did not find one in the uh, eight card Lily there. And we'll see just how afraid of Honchkrow he, GX he is right here. He's got the Pokemon communication in hand. Uh, he could certainly use that to search out like a Ditto Prism Star to start threatening the Alolan Muk. But if he is that concerned about Honchkrow GX, we may just see him grab Dedenne GX and say, you know what, I really need to find Double Colorless Energy this turn. But no, he's actually just going for Ditto. Goes for Ditto there. and. I think at this point what that basically means is he's going to have to find himself a, a turn where he can Guzma and just maximize the, uh, the double colorless energy uh, that he gets to uh, attach after Guzma, after playing Guzma. Now, will that be enough? I, I mean, honestly, I, I would say more than likely not. He'll need a little bit more help. <laughs> Uh-oh. Stefan reading Honchkrow GX. He's going to find some bad news there. And uh, Chris actually grabbing Enhanced Hammer off of the Stellar Wish as well. Um, this is not looking good huh. for our <laughs> international champion, uh, but... I wonder what's Chris... going through Stefan's mind right now. <laughs> I really do. Well, uh, it's about to get a little more unfair for him as well. 
as uh, Chris does Guzma out the Ditto Prism Star. He does need to switch his own Pokemon. Um, he needs to send that Hunch Crow active. There we go. And he can use Unfair GX, and it is very unfair, host. But you get to look at your opponent's hand and discard two cards. <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> exactly. That's what it says right there. It's unfair. Oh, man. Of course, gets rid of the Judge and... Uh, I didn't get to see the other card, but I'm sure it was a, poly I'm sure it was a powerful uh, card. Judge and Lily, I think. And now the ruler of the night is in place. Uh, as long as Honkrow GX is your active Pokemon, your opponent can't play any Pokemon tool, stadium, or special energy cards from their hand. And that means as long as Honkrow GX is Chris's active Pokemon, Stefan cannot play energy cards. Stefan's got to feel like what can I do at this point? <laughs> like I can't do anything. You even uh, you even discarded my two uh, <laughs> my two consistency cards. Yeah. Like I mean, I'm I'm glad he's not uh, he's not scooping up his cards yet. Of course, he's not. In, I mean, he is in a very tough spot, but he's not in a position where the game is completely unwinnable. It's just getting pretty close. <laughs> Yeah, he, he at least had a Pokemon communication to go get Zorak GX and trade. Uh, that rubs salt in the yeah, wound. Yeah, no kidding. Colorless. <laughs> Jeez. Uh. That's, that's about as painful as they get. All right, so uh, as long as Chris has a, an energy card here, which he does, he can start putting on the pressure. And we're going to see the Feather Storm. So that's 90 damage to the active, 30 damage to two of your opponent's benched Pokemon GX. And Chris is going to take the first prize card of this game. And boy, this one's looking a lot different, huh? Gets the first knockout, prevents Stefan from playing special energy. And uh, we also know that Chris, Chris has an enhanced hammer in his hand. So even if Stefan does something like uh, play Guzma and then attach double colorless, Chris is just going to enhance hammer it away. Sure. And now Dedene does uh, Dede change to draw six cards for Stefan at the cost of discarding his hand. Now, six new cards will obviously help, but I mean, if you're Stefan, you need so much help. You need, uh, of course, Guzma. You need multiple double colorless energies, multiple Guzmas, and just a lot more turns than, you're, uh, than you have available to you. Uh, but, I, I, I mean, what's Stefan going to do? At, at, the end, at the end of the day, he has to uh, win game three, and he will, be, uh, he will be going first, luckily for him, for game three. But, uh, and that's assuming that this game doesn't, you know, uh, that this game ends the way we assume it's going to end. But... Stefan's just got to be hoping to, to dodge that uh, that Honchkrow <laughs> one more time. Yeah, I, I do think going first is a big difference in this matchup. Uh, and, and to be fair, this is not guaranteed over by any means. Sure. Uh, Stefan could do something like uh, Guzma out your Mars Shadow, attach an energy, and then just pass. And then if Chris doesn't have a way to retreat Mars Shadow, uh, it's unlikely, but it can happen. Sure. Uh, then Stefan would get another turn to attach another energy. And... Uh, you know, if he can get energy into play, I mean, his attackers are just better than Chris's. Uh, Honchkrow GX, as annoying as it is, uh, cannot actually do a lot of damage. And all right, we are going to see. We're seeing a Guzma actually target the Jirachi, yeah. which is a bold strategy. Um, yeah, he's actually going to go ahead and try to knock it out. He's going to get the double colorless energy on there and just ride his beating for the knockout and say, all right, I hope this works out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe he has another Guzma in his hand. Maybe he's hoping to draw another double call as soon. Enhanced hammer. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, that's that. He, he expected that to happen, though, right? Like, he had, he had access to Judge. He had access to other cards, which would have disrupted uh, Chris's hand. But he, he chose to go to take this route. He, he felt like he needed uh, to, to take a prize and, um, and just kind of work around that enhanced hammer. He said, all right, fine. You have it. Let me just play. Let me just play. Uh, force you to play it, and then hope that the rest of this game starts to uh, go my way. Remember, he does have access to trade and multiple trades at that. So he's just going to be drawing a lot more cards than than Chris throughout the game. So as long as he can find the right cards, which are Guzma and our double colorless energy, then he has a chance to come, uh, climb back into it. It's just Chris is just putting consistent damage here, just consistently just dealing 90 damage and then 30 to two different bench Pokemon, that damage is going to start adding up quickly uh, from here on out. Yeah, over the course of two or three turns, I mean, there's going to start to be a lot of knockouts. And this is not going to be unusual. Stevan just has to pass the turn and say, well, I can't play energy. So I guess it's your turn now. 
And all Chris has to do is say, all right, Featherstorm, 90 to your active, 30 to two of your bench Pokemon. And yeah, this, this is not gonna last a whole lot longer. Yeah, I mean, a lot of things can happen here, but Stefan needs them to happen like right now. Uh, eh, he has access to multiple trades like we mentioned earlier, but you just, you, you have to have them happen right now. You need to, to have the, your, find your Guzma right now. Otherwise, yeah, I think this, this turn is probably the yeah. breaking point in the game. Uh, the Zorark GX in the active is going to go down. Uh, Chris could even have a turn if he has another Guzma where he can Guzma out the Tapu Lele GX and then use the bench damage from Featherstorm to take a four prize turn. Uh, they just got so much damage going on. And even if Stefan somehow deals with this, that Spiritomb has been slowly building spite going to give up to five damage counters at this point. Uh, with the Hustle Belt, it can reach some absurd numbers, so... Oh, he oh. has the Guzma. I was uh, I was waiting to see if he had a Guzma here. I think the Guzma should kind of prompt Stefan to, to scoop his cards up as a... Uh, I mean, just look at, look at how much damage is going to happen, or how much uh, damage is also going to not only come down onto Stefan's board, but uh, just how destroyed uh, Stefan's board is going to be at the end of this turn. Yep. See the energy lotto from Chris. Going to look at his top six cards, I believe, or maybe seven, sorry. Uh, if you find an energy card, just put it in your hand, but did not find an energy card. I don't think he's going to be too heartbroken by that, as he will feather storm this turn for eh, just four prizes. Not bad. Four prizes and 30 additional damage. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, two, the feather on the cap. Three, four. Hey, there's an energy. All right, uh, well, four prizes taken, only a single prize remaining for Chris. Does Stefan continue to play on here? <laughs> the heart of a champion, right? Yeah, I mean, there. if you think this matchup is unwinnable, I think there actually is merit to drawing this out as long as you can, where you're in a situation where you're like, ah, uh, I think I would be happy to tie with this deck. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just make this game take as long as I can, and then maybe, uh, maybe the third game doesn't finish. Yeah, that's not so bad. That's fair. I mean, I, I, it's it's a real strategy. Yeah. Uh, Chris, actually, uh, we gotta uh, take a look. Uh, we gotta take a good look at him, and that's a look of like, I I don't well definitely determination, but on top of that, just a lot of confidence. Uh, um, I'd, <laughs> I'd be pretty confident if I were in this spot. <laughs> uh, at this point, he he knows that this game is not only his, but that like as long as he, these things don't happen to him again, as long as that hunch crow is not just deep into deep yeah. prizes, <laughs> then it's going to be a, an uphill battle for Stefan, despite the fact that Stefan's going to get to go first. Obviously, going first is going to put him in a good spot, but or in a better oh, yeah. spot than this game, but, um, but you know, <laughs> what do you do? What do you do against Honchkrow that doesn't let you do anything, doesn't let you play the cards that you need to play? Yeah, and to be fair, Chris not only went first, but had a perfect start. He got the Murkrow down turn one with an energy... Turn two, he got the Honchkrow GX, uh, sent it active, and used his GX attack. And it's just been downhill from there for Stefan. Uh, you know, th there's a lot of games where, you know, Chris maybe gets turn two Honchkrow, but doesn't find a way to switch into it, so it doesn't actually work. There's games where he doesn't draw his enhanced hammer, so Stefan gets to actually use Riot as beating a couple times. Uh, this was the perfect scenario where when you draw it up, you're like, Okay, so I beat Zorak. If I go first, get Honchkrow out and Enhanced Hammer, their one attachment for the game. Flawless. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's other games where you're like, I didn't evolve my Murkrow turn two. They played Guzma and knocked it out. And, uh, well, <laughs> I lost. Well, meanwhile, Stefan did go for the strategy of uh, playing Guzma to uh, promote the, uh, the Marsh Tomp. <laughs> the Marsh Shadow. I knew I was going to say that at one point this weekend. <laughs> right, well, there's these. Who better to say it with than you? And uh, the escape board <laughs> Boom. Uh, allows the Marsh Shadow to retreat, and uh, that spirit tomb, which had been hanging out for a little while, finally gets to uh, seal the deal here for Chris as he takes his final prize of the game and evens things up at one game apiece. There's one game remaining between these two players to determine who's going to seal uh, seal their uh, their. Picture ticket to day two. Exactly what I meant to say. Yeah. It's yeah, like in my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and with about 30 minutes left, you got to think this game is going to resolve. Um, and yeah, one of these players will advance to day two here at the North American International Championships. Of course, Stefan trying to defend his title 
that he got last year with that Zorark Garboder deck. Uh, he dethroned Tord Reklev in the finals, who was going for an absurd back-to-back -back victory. And uh, now Stefan is saying, you know what? I'm going to go for the back-to-back -back victory. Maybe I can one-up Tord. You know, I saw an, uh, uh, an official tweet, actually, uh, from, from Pokemon, um, where Stefan was interviewed. And Stefan said, you know, there's a lot more pressure on me this time around. Last year, nobody knew me. This time around, everybody's expecting me to do well. So it's going to be a, uh, a lot of pressure on Stefan here, obviously in front of the camera. And uh, having already stolen basically one game here from, from Chris, he wants to find another victory here. Going first is going to be big for him, but it doesn't secure him a victory. He needs, to, he needs to have a lot of help from his deck, and he needs to hope that his opponent just kind of stumbles a little bit. All right, no Honchkrow GX in his prizes, so... This one's fair game. He's going to have access to his ruler of the night. But Stefan will be going first. And uh, yeah, I, I think Stefan, he has had a lot more pressure since that victory last year. Sure. But he stepped up to the plate. I mean, he got a second place finish at the Oceania International Championships this season, uh, proving to everybody that his win last year was not even close to being a fluke. He is an excellent player, uh, one of the most calculated um, just analytical players we've had in the Pokemon TCG. Just one of the many great players we've had from Europe pop up in the last couple of years just because of this new international championship system. Uh, Stefan was an excellent player before, don't get me wrong. He was a uh, French national champion. Sure. He was one of the best players in Europe. But now that we have this international stage where uh, the European players can travel around the world and show off their skills multiple times a year, you're getting to see it in action that... Okay, these guys like Tord Reklev, Stefan, uh, the Schultz brothers, these guys are the real deal. They are every bit as good and maybe even better than a lot of the American players we've come to, to know and love. Oh, absolutely. And uh, that was just a, a few of the European players. There's plenty, plenty more. Yep. Um, but Stefan here, remember, he does want to take advantage of going first. And right away does. He plays that double colorless energy onto that <laughs> Tapu Lele GX. He just wants to get these energy into play while he still can. He wants to kind of disrupt Chris if he can. He wants to, if only one Murkrow comes down and, uh, and, and nothing else, then maybe potentially Guzma it up. There's a lot of things that Stefan can do to, to put Chris in an awkward position. I think this is about as fair as this matchup is ever going to get. When Stefan gets to go first and Chris doesn't have uh, the Honchkrow prize. Yep, sure seems like it. And, and yeah, because Chris is playing the uh, 60 HP Murkrow, if he puts it down and attaches an energy to it, that means that uh, Tapu Lele GX can knock it out with an energy drive. So another point for putting a double colorless energy onto the Tapu Lele GX here. Stefan setting himself up to be in a good position here. Uh, unfortunately, just got two Zorua down that turn. And do Tapu Lele GX, not a lot of other basic Pokemon. Do you remember if any Murkrow were prized? Uh, I don't think so. Because he does play two, which are which is obviously very important. Yeah. I don't think there are any prized. Okay. Well, if there aren't any prizes, that's going to be really important for him. Uh, if he can find himself both of them on this turn, then that route to victory is gone for Stefan. But, I mean, he has to do that. <laughs> it's yeah. not the easiest thing in the world to pull off. Yeah, if he and can hit a Professor Elm's lecture off this is. Poke Gear, which he did. So now, as long as no Murkrow are prized, I'm sure he's going to find two of them. Probably. I mean, you just, you have to, I think. <laughs> Yeah, I, I would think so, but I don't know. Chris has probably played this matchup, well, definitely more than me, which is zero times. <laughs> um, I don't think he went for any. Yeah, I, I was actually wondering if you're going second and your opponent has already gotten an energy down, do you even bother? Uh, it, it's not very good anymore if you send up Honchkrow and your opponent just gets to attack it. Uh, also, oh. also, there's a double colorless on top of Lele, so your opponent can just Guzma and knock it out so perhaps Chris just saying you know what this just isn't a situation where Hans is good maybe it's only good if I go first I can see the theory behind that but then because you know your opponent plays Alolan Muck uh, you know that the rest of your deck isn't particularly good against, <laughs> yeah, uh, but, against uh, Stefan your opponent didn't get an Alolan Grimer didn't right. get a Ditto Prism Star right. uh, and that is what I was going to say was that because he sees that there's no uh, no potential turn two Muck threat maybe he just decided to, to go for that strategy and say well, now it'll take you at least another turn, turn to, uh, to bring that muck into play. I think by then I'll have enough of a setup that I'll be able to 
have a fighting chance. But, I mean, I get it. I, I understand that uh, it's a much stronger play when you go first. But I don't know. It, it's going to be interesting because stopping your opponent from playing additional double colors energies is just really strong. Um, and if he's not going to go for that strategy, then he has to rely on these uh, spirit tombs to kind of just pull a lot of weight. Yeah, and we do see uh, Field Blower discarding the escape board from the Jirachi, as well as the Judge from Stefan trying to disrupt Chris as much as he can. We see the important stadium card out there, the Black Market Prism Star. It's a stadium card that says your darkness Pokemon that have any darkness energy attached to them, if they get knocked out, your opponent takes one fewer prize card. So that means if Stefan doesn't counter that stadium, and simply says, energy drive, knockout. He takes zero prize cards for it, which, man, that is a really powerful effect. And we, it really is, We yeah. see the whole Shedinja deck built around this concept, and just having one stadium card do that is huge. But we see Stefan one step ahead using Pokemon communication for that Mars Shadow, and can use its ability to discard the Black Market Prism Star and say, nope. None of that stuff here. I'm taking my prize card. This Marshadow doesn't like to let loose, but it does like to get rid of uh, powerful stadiums like Black Market, and that's exactly what it's going to do. And now with Black Market gone, uh, it's, it's fair game time. Boom. All right, going to reset the stadium here. Goodbye, Black Market. Go to the Lost Zone and Energy Drive for the knockout. And now Chris is in perhaps an awkward situation, although he will attach a darkness energy to the Eevee and go ahead and use that energy evolution ability to grab Umbreon, Umbreon which can now uh, retaliate for 120 damage. So he may be trying to keep up in the prize race here. Uh, if he has a Guzma this turn, could go after that Zorua, which is pretty big. Uh, it, it limits the number of Zoroark GX Stefan has in play. Yeah, uh, Pokegear could find that Guzma uh, that you were just uh, talking about. Lots of uh, lots of cards that that Pokegear can find, but Guzma is the ideal uh, card in this uh, specific spot. Now, we see those Spirit Tombs start to tick up. Like we said, they're starting to get angry, starting to get a little mad. Right now, they're just frustrated. Building a lot of spite over there. And, uh, yeah, well, there's, there's Umbreon uh, with, uh, with Zoro. He looks like he did have the Guzma already in his hand. And uh, Retaliate, getting rid of the Zorua. Only one Zorua can play, no additional Zoruas. And uh, that means that you only get to trade once. How, un how unfair. <laughs> yes, you only get to draw two extra cards. Um, but the important thing here is he does not have a lot of Pokemon in play, period. Uh, he's starting the turn with just one benched Pokemon. He's going to need to find, well, he's got one. He's going to need to find three more before he can ride his beating for the knockout. This is a big moment in this game. Going to be able to Lily for, I think, three or four cards and then trade once, and he needs to find three Pokemon. Well, he finds a Pokemon communication, which he's means... He's got a Zorua and a communication, so he's two-thirds of the way there. Just got to trade into one more way to find a basic Pokemon. Okay, and some evolutions to go with it, so yeah, absolutely. Now, do you trade first, or do you communication first? No, you trade first, every time. <laughs> Good man. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think I found him a Nest Ball, too. Yeah. Uh, ultimately, the communication, uh, well, it actually does matter. If you're searching out a basic Pokemon, you're reducing your odds of drawing a basic Pokemon. So, yeah, you would want to trade first, I try agree. to hit a basic Pokemon, and then you communication. Figured it out. All right. <laughs> that seal. We got there. <laughs> found by Nest Ball. And uh, that's a third basic Pokemon. I think that there's already Zoro in his hand. Yep, like we said. And now, does he find the fifth? He has a judge in hand? He's got communication. He's already played a supporter for the turn, so can't, uh, can't do any of those, but can a communication. Uh, do you ever get nervous when a player has uh, a supporter in their hand, like as the card that they're looking at, and they've already played <laughs> a supporter? Yeah, I've been there. Looks like he's just going to hit for 100. This is an interesting play because he can set up for that Giratina later on with Distortion Door and uh, take a knockout that way. He's saying, you know what, Umbreon really isn't threatening. If I haven't taken a knockout, then eh, it does, what, like 30 damage? Right. Uh, so I'll just leave it here. Who cares? But Chris perhaps punishing him a little bit, saying, you know what? I got this hustle belt. Uh, now my Umbreon can do 60 more damage. 
I don't know if that actually gets him to any relevant numbers, but maybe he can Guzma something out and take advantage of that hustle belt. Well, there's the Guzma, just as if on cue. <laughs> it seems like every time you mention Guzma, hey, he Guzma. finds one. And, uh, and there's that Guzma, like we said, and now he can definitely get punished for it, but how punishing is it really? Is, is Stefan going to be in the back foot after this play? I'm not, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, it depends on how big of a knockout he can get. He's going to go after the Ditto Prism Star, which is an excellent play, I think. Um, Stefan is threatening a huge knockout next turn uh, with the Seal and the Ditto Prism Star. Uh, if he can get Dugong into play, uh, he can use that dual blizzard. Chris is trying to find a way to get his Mew into play so uh, he can prevent uh, dual blizzard from happening, but he doesn't find it. I think his Mew is prized, actually. So Stefan next turn can take up to three prizes. Uh, if he's able to find Jeez. the cards he needs. Uh, but Chris just going to go ahead and with that hustle belt, take the knockout on Ditto Prism Star to at least deny one evolution. But we'll see if Stefan can pull off the big Dugong play. If he can get Guzma to send the Umbreon to the bench, he can Distortion Door with Giratina, knock out Umbreon with the ability, and then Dual Blizzard to knock out two Spiritomb at once. Yeah, Dugong, of course, played because of the fear of Rush Ram and Charizard tag team GX, but kind of showing that it can pull its own weight in other matchups as well uh, if, it can, if it can actually come down here in this particular spot. Uh, because you're absolutely right. Taking three prizes in this, uh, in this situation is just huge. Yeah, Stevan has actually been kind of the champion of Dugong. A lot of players felt like it just doesn't have enough of an impact to be a great card. Uh, you say it's good against Rush Ram and Charizard GX, and it does hit for weakness, but it's honestly, it doesn't do enough to get a one-hit knockout. Of course, uh, of It can chip in for some sure. good damage, set up for a two-hit knockout, but a lot of players started preferring things like Slow King or Silvalli GX. Sure, uh, I mean, I guess I could have specified that, you know, it's effective in that matchup, but also yeah. more effective than the other cards in other matchups. Yeah, it's really effective against Blacephalon GX, that's for sure. Uh, no with, kidding. With a choice ban, it can knock it out and do 60 somewhere else, but we'll see, did Stefan find everything he needed? He is gonna need to find the triple acceleration energy to pull off all of this. Does he have access to two trades right now still? I think he's used both of them at this point. So unless he wants to use Dedenne GX to dig a little deeper. That's what it's there for. He might not. I mean, it's risky to use Dedenne GX. It's got 160 HP and that matches up very poorly against Spiritomb. Uh, yeah. If it has five damage counters on it, it does exactly 160, so. I don't know, this game might be very, very close if Stefan misses the dual blizzard this turn. Uh, currently, Chris is ahead on prize cards, and yeah, I mean, he's got all those Spiritomb built up on his bench. If those go unchecked, I mean, they get scary pretty quickly. Uh, when you add that hustle belt into the equation, uh, fully powered Spiritomb can actually knock out Zorak GX. Well, with two seal on the bench, uh, Stefan, like we said earlier, just needs more uh, ne needs more tools this on this particular turn. The Guzma it does seem to be the the supporter that he's eyeing down. Just isn't quite sure what to do with it yet. There's a few options, but none of them are ex uh, extremely exciting. Uh, yeah, and he's got a uh, yeah, tough choice here. As Go for the Garage. I like that play. Yeah, you almost, I mean, do you want to take a knockout here? Uh, if you take a knockout, your opponent gets to retaliate. Oh, okay, he's just going to go for the Distortion Door this turn. That makes a lot of sense. I was going to say, that's going to be really scary if you walk right yeah. into the Umbreon. But yeah, you definitely can't afford to do that. All right, so Stefan right there tying up this game, three prize cards apiece. Can the Army of Spiritomb on Chris's side, overcome the mighty Zorark GX. Can three 60 HP basic Pokemon <laughs> take down the, the Colossus of the standard format? <laughs> For so many years, right? Uh, again, Stefan showing, uh, showing off that Zorark GX one last time, one last ride here for that Zorark GX here. And uh, Spiritomb kind of showing that it can hang with the big boys. Uh, that distortion door was about as crucial as it could get, though. If it wasn't for that for that distortion door, then um, then I think Stefan would have been a, in a world of trouble. 
Yeah, Chris now is in an awkward spot. Uh, he played the energy lotto, was probably hoping to find rainbow energy. Instead, find a finds a basic darkness energy. And he's going to keep building spite with those spirit tomb. He's got a choice. What does he want to do here? Looks like he's going for the Professor Elms lecture. Uh, hope, hoping to find a Mew, but it is in his prize cards. The Mew's in his prize cards? Yeah, and that is devastating. He could have played Cynthia this turn, but opted to go for the Professor Elms lecture, saying, you know what, I think I'm fine as long as my opponent can't use Dugong to take two prizes next turn. She's like, I'll just play Professor Elms lecture, go get the Mew, search my deck. Oh, no. <laughs> Rare misstep from Chris. Yeah. Um, but these things do happen, and that's, that could end up being punishing here uh, against Chris's. Obviously, the Cynthia would have been a much, much uh, better play in this particular turn. Now, uh, a spirit tomb full of, you know, full of hate at this point <laughs> is, uh, and anguish, of course, is, uh, is about to kind of like let loose in its, in its own way and, uh, to and apply some pressure. Yeah, you cry out, you let loose. It's kind of the same thing. <laughs> All right, That's kind of what I imagine Marshad are doing every time. Sure. <laughs> we got the Anguish Cry for 130 damage. It's a two-hit knockout on Zorark GX. But at this point, Stefan needs to find that triple acceleration energy and power up that Dugong, the card he has uh, sung the praises of for weeks now. Well, and, there's uh, an ultra ball for the Dugong. He's about to prove everybody wrong with this Dugong if he can find that triple acceleration energy. Seems like he's willing to discard a couple of Pokemon, which obviously no room for in his bench. Yeah. Boy, the story of this match has been Chris being betrayed by <laughs> his prize cards, right? Right. Uh, oh, yeah. Game one, the Honchkrow GX in there. Game three, the Mew, when he needs it the most, is in his prize cards. Guy can't catch a break. I mean, they're, they're single copies, right? Like, these things do happen. It's just when they happen twice in one match. <laughs> That's when it really starts to hurt. Yeah. Um, but Stefan, does he find the triple acceleration energy? We don't have a good look at his hand yet. I don't think he found it, though. I think he would have just slammed it down. Yeah, doesn't look like he has it. And I think he's got, I don't know if he's played a supporter card yet this turn. He's got a judge in hand if he really wants to go for that. But it looks like instead, whoa, is he going to set up Tapu Lele GX? Um, that seems like a very risky play. I guess it, it's probably no riskier than using uh, Zorark GX, actually. Uh, it's the same thing where you're going to get knocked out if your opponent has a hustle okay. belt. So I guess that does make sense. And yeah, now Chris, he's got an opening. Well, does he find Well, he has, he has a, a Cynthia in hand. He wants to play down his cards as much as possible before shuffling his uh, his one remaining card back into the deck and drawing six new ones. Needs a... He needs a hustle belt. Yeah, well, needs a hustle belt and an energy. Yeah, well, he can find the energy at will now with the Viridian All Force. Right, of course, so of course. Really just digging for the hustle belt here. Now, Stefan has put himself in position to win if he can find the triple acceleration energy on the next turn. Uh, he can just dual blizzard for the win. Does he find the hustle belt? He does. He's still hustling. Spoiler alert, that Spiritomb starts to hustle. <laughs> and uh, of course, like you mentioned, he gets to find that, uh, that darkness energy now. And that's going to mean that Tapu Lele is going to be going down. Well, actually, never mind. He, he's not using the stadium quite yet. Potentially going to let loose first. Yep. All right. So he's saying, all right, Stefan, uh, you didn't seem to have triple acceleration energy in the last turn, but you got a lot of cards in your hand. so. Can he dodge uh, it one more time? <laughs> That's really what it comes down to. Yeah. Two uh, turns already that he's dodged it, even though it seems like so improbable for him to be able to dodge through so many uh, <laughs> trades and draws and, you know. I mean, Stefan's uh, going to get two trades. Lilies. He's got the Dugong out there already. There's just, Stefan's <laughs> got to be thinking, like, there's just not, no way, right? <laughs> he's not even looking at his hand. <laughs> <laughs> there's just no way. Like, like he, Not giving us any info. Uh, Spirit Tomb on the bench, continuing to build spite, and he's going to get the knockout here. Does right. Stefan find triple acceleration? I think energy? he did. I think he found it. Yes, he did. There it is. Triple acceleration energy is going to be enough to take the final two prizes of the game for Stefan, and that means that Stefan will win the match two games to one against Chris Yakala in a very well played match by both players and uh, a showcase 